Hi everyone, welcome back to the Get A Brew channel. So today, I'm part of the series that we're doing on yeasts, we are joined by Andres and we're gonna look at low and no alcohol beer production. Basically, there's four ways that you can approach this and you're not gonna be kitted out to do all of these at home. Um, commercial brewers, it will depend on what kit and facilities you have available to you as to whether you can do it. So there's RO, there's distillation, there's... Um, arrested fermentation. Arrested fermentation. <laughs> <laughs> See, you even helped me out there. <laughs> arrested fermentation followed by sterile filtration. That's and right. then the and fourth one is this... Maltose negative. Maltose negative, yeah. yeah. To keep it really, really simple, why we're doing this is to promote the thermal brew range because you have tried and tested this application process whatever you want to call it and um, using these products and take us through your experience in using them well i back in 2019 i started you know evaluating this uh, series of yeast strains yeah for uh, production of low and non-alcoholic beers yeah so um originally from um they're hybrid yeast strains yeah Originally for it was a production of white wine yeast okay, uh, yeah. production, which has a very you know specific flavor profile. Yeah. You know, and the main characteristic of these strains is that they produce uh, you know higher levels of thiols, okay. which is uh, you know these small uh, compounds, uh, very highly volatile, and you know, and they give you very uh, you know pleasant aromas okay, like yeah. citrusy or floral or you know. Um, fruity okay. as well so um okay so my, my thought was like okay how can i take advantage of this you know for yeah. production of low and non-alcoholic beers because as we know you know it's quite challenging to have a you know a really a great you know balanced uh, you know to have yeah. a low have a low alcohol beer with flavor you mean exactly <laughs> yeah. just, yeah. To, to, just like uh, yeah. that uh, that it tastes like beer you know yeah so i, I think if, if someone say like oh this non-alcoholic Tastes like beer is a, is a is a big compliment, you know. Yeah. What I recommend when you are you know um, designing a recipe for non-alcoholic beers and, and using the Fermo Brew series, is that you establish your OG, your inner gravity between 10, 16 to 10, uh, 24. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, I would say this range is, is important because if you go higher than that, you know, then it gets uh, you know too uh, you know worth flavor to sweet yeah and if you go lower than that and then you get to you know water down product and and just before you move on there the grist for that then obviously is going to be really low in terms of volume you know as in the, the weight of it at such a low yeah gravity. that's right yeah. yeah that's right yeah. yeah yeah and is there any recommendations that you would make to the brewers in relation to the makeup of that is there a certain uh, mulch you recommend like are you looking something that's high in dextrins you know, or any any grist can be fermented. At, at well, it can be any, any, you know, any, because any. I don't want to restrict too much this on the brewers because it also depends on the beer style they okay. want, want yeah. to deal with. Of course, there's some brewers that can use, you know, dextrin malts as well, but yeah. uh, but I would say, well, it's not necessary for, for this particular method. Okay. Yeah. So you establish your, you know, your grain, your grain build the way, the yeah. way you like. I just recommend this OG that, that range. Gravity. Yeah, yeah, it's like gravity. And, and then um, you pitch the, the firmer brew, you know, okay. and well, in this case, citrus. Okay. And you leave it active, actually. You don't cold crush it straight away, you know, okay. which is a common practice for, for arrested fermentation. Yeah. No, so just leave it active uh, around, you know, 12 degrees Celsius, 12 to 14 degrees Celsius. And so the, the intention is to allow the, this yeast will produce all these beautiful aroma compounds, these styles. Okay and which is very noticeable in the first, I would say, from the 24 to 72 hours. So, but what is very important is you need to monitor, you know, the alcohol formation, the ethanol, okay. that it will not exceed, you know, the, what is, you know, the, the maximum allowed. Yeah. Yeah. So when you reach 0 0.4 ABB, and then you call crash it. Okay. But uh, you will notice that, that beautiful aromas. Yeah. I must say that they are not overpowering, but, mm -hmm. uh, but they're noticeable. And then, um, yeah, well, then you could crush it, and I recommend you, you leave it, you know, conditioning uh, for 10 days at okay. least. Yeah. Just to allow no uh, chemical reactions, you know, not just biochemical, but chemical as well, you know, they're taking place just yeah. to balance out, you know, the flavor. 
and, uh, and of course it's optional if the brewer wants to dry hop their beer. Something very, very important I, I, I recommend you guys is to acidify your beer. Okay. You know, is you, this before you, you start can, fermentation? You can, you can do it uh, in the in the whirlpool tank in the work okay. in the you know, the work kettle, or you can do it in the you know in, in the in the, in the fermentation tank. Okay. It's, it's up to the brewer, but important the point is that you need to mimic, you know, the 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 normal the pH, pH of the, of the beer. Yeah. So we know in wort is normally between 5.2 to 5.5. Yeah. So, and you know, uh, the, the beer pH is normally 4.4, exactly yeah. 4.2, 4.4. 4. Yeah. So, and you can do it just by means of, you know, adding lactic acid, okay. for example, yeah. and, or any other food grade uh, acid of your choice. Yeah. Or even you can use uh, acidify malt, you know, okay. that yeah. is also available, that's up, up to the brewer. But that will help a lot to, to balance out the flavor. Yeah. So just to keep in mind that you have you know, not just the bitterness of the hops and the sweetness of the malt, but also you have the acidity. Okay. So and then you, you have three variables to play with. Yeah. And that will help you a lot for, uh, to make the beer, you know, more refreshing. Yeah. And it will taste more like beer. Yeah. But on the top of that, you know, this yeast will help you to give you this, this aroma and to balance out, you know, okay. even more the flavor. So in order to avoid this typical, you know, cloying, malty, yeah. you know, tasting non-alcoholic beers or low alcoholic beers. And then, well, once you're done in the conditioning, I mean, this is ready to go. You just need to make sure that uh, you must do, uh, either you pasteurize your product yeah. or you are use sterile filtration, okay. which means, uh, you know, cartridge filters with uh, absolute uh, pore size of 0 0.45 microns. Okay. So in order to, uh, you know, guarantee the biological stabilization of your beer. Okay. And, uh, and then, yeah, you're ready. So the, the important thing there, in layman's terms, the biological stabilization means don't create a bottle bomb. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. just, so uh, that's, that's you, a... you need the sterile filter to remove all the yeast so that there isn't another um, fermentation that takes place. Say your beer's set in a warm shelf or you've, you know, this isn't something for a very basic homebrew setup. This is definitely something for commercial brewers with the correct equipment to right. do arrested fermentation. So. The, the, and this is a serious matter, I must say, because uh, as you say, you, you don't want to create little bumps yeah. on the shelves. So it's important that uh, the brewer must uh, make sure that there is no uh, yeast you know, present, yeah. active yeast in the final product. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're using uh, you know, the Fermo Brew series or can be any other uh, yeast strains, even the Maltos negative yeast strains, also you, you know, just cold crushing it you're just gonna repress the activity of the yeast, yeah. but still alive. Yeah. So you don't want that uh, when it's once on the shelves are at room temperature, you know, they start fermenting. They start again. fermenting again. Yeah. So that's very, very important to consider. Andres has got a, well, career changing, what would you call it? Um, Fanboy, whatever <laughs> appeal on the thermal brew citrus because he was able to brew a highly well-known um, low no alcohol beer for Iron Maiden so That's right. this process was used for that beer so um, we want you to, to try this we can see that there's um, a move towards the low and no alcohol beer consumption locally and there's probably a number of factors causing that like people are much more health conscious now and right. perhaps <clears throat> paying attention to their alcohol consumption maybe there's um, you know maybe they're driving and exactly. they just want the to enjoy a beer. Reasons, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Um, so like, we can see that that's a trend that's growing and evolving. And one, one point to touch on is AEB, who produced this yeast, also um, purchased and acquired Damel, who produced sterile filtration filters right. and the cartridges. And we can get access to those as well. So if you're a brewer in the UK and Ireland and you're interested in doing arrested fermentation and you need that filtration product, we can assist with that as well. You have looked at uh, arrested fermentation you have successful case study of that that we've mentioned and uh, at the start we'd mentioned that there was other methods so RO distillation maltose negative yeast strains so I think probably the the investments enormous for some of those options so take us very briefly through how they work and what's the benefits and drawbacks of those yeah that's right well you know um the RO, you know, reverse osmosis, which is basically membrane filtration and yeah. distillation are the 
the most common uh, way for the large breweries to produce the non-alcoholic beers. Yeah. And basically, uh, the principle is that you can you just do a regular you know, alcoholic beer, and, and and this technology basically remove the alcohol yeah. uh, out from the from the product. And uh, so this technology just you, you know you, you can make sure that your product is is totally you know free of yeah. alcohol, but uh, but the most important is the flavor you know yeah. of your product, and that could be questionable. Yeah. So uh, what I'm saying is not a guarantee uh, investing for such an expensive technology. To yeah. have a great beer, so uh, it depends a lot on the brewer skills. Actually, the, for non uh, and low alcoholic beers, the, the brewer skills is, is number one. Yeah, and um, so rested fermentation is the most common practice, uh, you know, amongst uh, craft brewers because yeah. you know it's, it's a cheaper option, you know, but uh, it can happen that it, you can get even much interesting and more, you know, better products flavor-wise yeah. than using, uh, you know, expensive technology. And uh, in the case of, you know, another method is, uh, you know, using uh, maltose negative yeast strains, which yeah. are out in the market. And there are strains that they, as the name is, you know, it doesn't ferment maltose, which is the main sugar in wort. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you, you, you these yeast strains, yeah, you, you can guarantee there is no uh, alcohol formation in the process. Yeah. But again, uh, nobody talk about the flavor profile, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, uh, done by by these strains. And in most of the cases, they are not the, the not best great. ones. Yeah. No, and they're not yeah. they're not great. So uh, in now in the method that we are proposing, you know, in uh, an AB is these these strains they uh, partially f ferment maltose. Yeah. So it produces some ethanol. Yeah. So, but uh, but the highlight is that how to take advantage of the of these great you know thiols, uh, these aroma compounds produced by these uh, particular strains. Okay. Yeah. So it's more about the strategy of the brewer. Okay, allowing allow the yeast to produce these these aromas, and then before the alcohol uh, exceed the limit, you just call crash it. Yeah. How closely would you be monitoring the you know the fermentation curve? Are you talking? That is it likely fermenting at those temperatures with these strains that you'll hit that within what 24 48 hours or in yeah uh, in according to my experience it takes between two to three days okay and you don't need, you don't need to monitor every hour you know okay. you just do it like daily yeah and uh but i would say to be on the safe side two days okay she'll be fine yeah and the third day you need to be you know keep an eye cl ready cl to closer to to, 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 to crash to, to yeah. crash it yeah yeah that's right and one advice important, and that's besides, so the strain is dry hopping. Yeah. You know, some brewers they uh, used to, you know, they liked dry hopping at early stage of fermentation. Yeah. And uh, and the well known, you know, hop creep yeah. can appear, and of course it's going to trigger also the, the fermentation of the strain. Okay. Yeah. By the strain, so uh, just so you need to consider that. So ideally, it will be to dry hop after. After you your core crash it. Or ideally just or just keep an eye closely about the, the alcohol formation you know yeah so the 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 thing is that the yeast is still active but it's still um, you know normally the optimal temperature for these strains they were 25 degrees for production yeah but uh, for this particular method at 12 degrees still active or repressed yeah that's why the alcohol formation is is, is taking yeah. place very slowly yeah and uh, but the interesting part is you get these pleasant aromas yeah yeah so like that's low and no alcohol production and we've went through the methods, arrested fermentations recommended using Fermo Brew Series. Um, we're going to carry a number of these strains in stock here. We're just featuring citrus on this particular occasion. So thanks Andres for your um, knowledge and help with that topic. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a shout, drop a comment below or get in contact via one of our social channels. And until next time, happy brewing.